Yes. 1200 RPM? Are you serious? I don't think that the AK can go that fast. <sighs> Suck up yet. All right. If it must be done, comrade. What, you thought I was going to do it without a tracksuit on? <laughs> Привет! Добро пожаловать в очередной эпизод PSR. Hello and welcome back to another episode of PSR. Today we're talking about a rare collaboration between the US of A and Russia in the form of the Kalashnikov USA KP9. And we're going to go as you saw very fast. But first, I've got to thank the channel sponsor for PSR and that is KAK Industry. If you do not like AKs and you rather run ARs, I pity you. But if you want to run AR, I would pick KAK Industry for all of the parts related to ARs. They make very high quality stuff and it's affordable. Now KAK is made in the US of A and if you want to be a mega chad, I would never go to KAK Industry and use the code PSR for 10% off. Never do it. It would be horrible to do that. Yes. Anyway, thank you KAK for sponsoring this channel. Oh, I almost forgot. KAK provided all of the ammo for this video. So thank you KAK. Back to the video. All right, let's talk about the KP9. All right, guys, I will spare you the accent for the rest of the video. But I do want to thank you for watching today. And I hope you enjoy your stay here. If you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. It does help. And the algorithm, leave a comment. And if you're pooping right now, I would suggest you just stay on the shitter, watch the episode, and delay the wipe. Use a bidet. All right, so let's talk a little bit about this gun. So this is the KUSA or Kalashnikov USA KP9. It is a clone of the Russian Vityaz submachine gun. Contrary to maybe what you believe from the opening footage, this is a semi-automatic firearm. This is one pull, one shot. No binary, no fully auto, no auto sears or anything, I promise. ATF. I've had this gun for a few months now and I really enjoy it and I thought why not do a video on it. So if you want to know more information about it, stick around. We're going to get into it. So let's go into a little bit of the history around the KP9 slash Vityaz. Now in the early 90s, the Russian Interior uh, Ministry of Defense, they wanted to make a gun that would be good for their law enforcement units and they wanted it to be a pistol caliber cartridge gun like a submachine gun fast rapid fire low recoil for their operators and thus came the vityaz now this is not a vityaz this is semi-auto like i said and this is an american made version but the russian version this is a pretty much one-to-one -one clone of there are a couple small differences but this is basically a vityaz submachine gun in semi-auto. Now, the Russian version of this gun is known as the Saiga 9, and the reason why we can't get those here is because of the Russian embargo. We can't get these Russian-made firearms in the United States anymore, so that's where KUSA, Kalashnikov USA, comes in. Now, Kalashnikov USA has made great clones of the Saiga 12, the AK-103, and now the Vityaz in the form of the KP9. This gun also comes in rifle form, 
and it has a faux suppressor on the front. It's also known as the KR9. I bought this with my own money and I'm not getting paid to say anything from KUSA. They do not know I'm making this review at all and I really do have a lot of positive things to say about this gun. <laughs> All right, so I'm editing this video right now. I wanted to make a quick side note about Kalashnikov USA and the KP9 specifically. There have been multiple documented cases of the KP9 firing out of battery. When we're talking about out of battery, we're not talking about running out of battery as in we lost charge. We're talking about gun firing with the bolt open and uh, big splody splode inside, going outside and danger, not good. You don't want that. Luckily, Kalashnikov USA has addressed these issues and have actually admitted that they are happening, which is always good. And they are now taking KP9s and you can send them in and they will automatically swap out the firing pin. I believe it's a firing pin issue. I haven't had any issues with mine. It's never fired out of battery, even with that fast rate of fire, but I thought I'd mention it. So on with the rest of the video. So this gun is primarily based on an AK-74. It looks like it in the handguard. It has a folding rear trunnion here, a button where you can just press and the trunnion folds. Um, and it has similar sights. And the only big difference is obviously the function of the gun. This is a nine millimeter and it uses blowback operation. There's no pistons or anything in there. Basically the AK bolt is a normal AK bolt, except without a piston and that whole area where the piston is, is just filled with steel. The bolt has a lot of mass to it and it just goes back and forth with the recoil of the gun. There's nothing too complicated about it. It's just a straight blowback nine millimeter PCC. Now the gun comes stock with a polymer handguard on the front. And what I did was I bought a KR-103 handguard and swapped out the furniture on it. I wanted this to look a little bit more classic, a little bit more bank robber style. I just wanted it to look very crude and not very technical. I've seen a lot of videos. Guys will just make them look like the most crazy, teched out like M-Lock and Picatinny rails on the front and big optic. And you know, you can get a bunch of cool clone parts to make it look as accurate to a Vichy as possible. But I just wanted to go another route where it just took it to the most simplest form using the wood handguard with a bunch of goon tape here on the grip. And this is a brace on the back. It's a little funny because this has two folding mechanisms on it now. I got a JMAC Picatinny adapter so I could just use my regular folding brace, uh, but it also has a folding mechanism in the trunnion. So there's two ways to fold it essentially. You can get a triangle brace or a stock if you want to SBR it that would just fold with the triangle brace naturally from KUSA, uh, and then you wouldn't have two mechanisms that fold. But since I wanted to use an already purchased brace instead of buying a new one, I just got the Picatinny adapter from JMAC. I believe this barrel is around eight inches, and the main difference between the Vityaz and the KP9 is the thread pitch on this muzzle here. The muzzle thread pitch is a half by 28 thread pitch. The original Vityaz had a different thread pitch, which would make it a lot harder to add your muzzle devices and suppressors on the front. Now for the video, I used the iron sights only. You can put an optic on this rail. This is a 1913 rail that is part of the dust cover. I have used optics on this gun before and they have held zero fine. So I don't see there being really any issues with zero using this rail. The cool thing is if you're used to running AKs, you will feel right at home with this gun. There is a similar paddle mag release to a regular AK and the charging mechanism up here is like a regular AK, and the safety right here is just like a normal AK. KUSA uses the standard capacity magazines here. However, I have added a wonderful plus 10 extension. You've got a little sling loop on the front here, and it's important to note that all the furniture that fits the other KR-103 rifle that Kalashnikov USA makes will fit on this gun, and that's why I was able to swap the wood with the original polymer. Now I think it's time to talk a little bit about the internals here. So as far as YouTube is concerned, this is a completely factory gun. I didn't modify it using factory parts and everything's from Kalashnikov USA. So a company called Rifle Dynamics worked with Kalashnikov USA in developing a short stroke buffer for this system. So it's a special short stroke buffer made for the KP9. And what it does is it makes this bolt travel a lot less when the gun is recoiling. For example, you can see here, it usually travels all the way back into this slot, but with the short stroke buffer, it goes back only to about here. There is a very big difference in the cyclic rate of this gun with the buffer in it compared to the normal one. 
The other major difference between the normal KP9 and this guy is the trigger. So Kalashnikov USA collaborated with CMC Triggers. It is a single stage trigger that weighs two and a half pounds and it feels really great. Let's ghost this trigger together. And the reset. Now I've got to take a quick break in the video to have a little conversation with you so that we don't get banned. There is something that goes on when you shoot this gun. It's a special phenomenon that I'm going to refer to as gumping. It's like Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump, he run very fast. I run very fast with this KP9. Okay? How? It's by Forrest Gumping the gun. The word gump rhymes with another word that's very similar, but is very scary to a lot of people. So we're not going to say it in the video. But gumping could be referred to as something like we gump and grind and oops I gumped my head so you know what I'm saying hopefully you understand this but I have to speak in code with you is part of a special game we have to play on YouTube so how I was able to go so fast with the trigger was with the power of Forrest Gump I love you Jenny so how I was able to get that trigger to go so fast was through the recoil and the blowback of the gun, which really is pretty minor, honestly. Yes! Compared to other blowback PCCs like the Scorpion, it's a lot less felt recoil, in my opinion. It's not quite as low as the MP5 in felt recoil, but it is very low, and I was actually quite shocked by how little recoil I felt. But that recoil is enough to send Forrest Gump into the situation and the way that trigger pull is moves the gun back and into your trigger finger. So what happens and you'll see in the footage is it's just going back and forth and that Forrest Gump is just running and running. I think I was able to get around 17 shots, 15, 16, 17 shots in a row using the Forrest Gump method. Is it practical to use this method in real, like a defensive situation or something? Absolutely not. It is just a fun thing to do at the range. And I did get some light primer strikes doing this. It's going so fast. I think I did the math and it's around 1200 RPM, which is just absolutely bad shoot insane. That's like MG42 speed, pretty damn impressive. With that short stroke buffer, it just allows it to go really fast and the two and a half pound trigger, it just makes forest gumping very, very easy. And you can even forest gump it from your shoulder. These strings and bursts of fire were really fun, but the two round burst that I got from doing the forest gumping was probably the most fun because it's so fast that it feels like one shot. It almost sounds like one shot, which is just insane. Thanks to Forrest Gump and how fast he was able to run, I was able to get these two shots just like consecutively, no problem. Now the longer strings of fire took a little bit more practice and I was never able to do a full mag of this gumping method. And yes, ammo is expensive, so I was only able to do it so much, but I did get a lot of footage of it. And as you see, uh, it was going pretty damn fast. Now outside of the gumping, I did just do a bunch of just single shots with this trigger and it is just such a joy to shoot. I mean the travel is basically nothing and it's so crisp and the reset is so short. I had no issues hitting targets whether it was long distance or short. The iron sights really worked well. Now I didn't have any malfunctions like the light primer strikes when I was just going single shot and not trying to do the gumping. So I think it had to do with the gumping to be honest, all those light primer strikes, which I got a few. The mag extension mag ran flawlessly. I didn't have any jams. I've probably run almost 1500 rounds through this gun. Not a single malfunction relating to anything but that trigger, which like I said, was just me outrunning the gun, I think with that gumping method. So I really wouldn't count those as malfunctions. And with a trigger like this and you're doing that, you're gonna expect some malfunctions. Now, what are the other competitors to this gun? Well, there are a lot of other competitors, but I would say this is the only AK I would get this chambered in nine millimeter. There's like the Century Arms, like NAC 9 or whatever it's called. And you know, that like feeds using Glock mags. I know they have like a Scorpion mag one, but to be honest, that just doesn't compete with this. I mean, this is so badass for what you get. And the felt recoil is amazing. I would pick this over the PSA AKV in a second. I've shot that gun and it's cool, but this is just like a actual clone of a Russian made gun. Politics aside, Russia is good at making AKs and 
we can clone it in America and support a US business, hey, I'll buy it. So in conclusion, I, like I said before, had an absolute blast shooting this thing. I think that the trigger and the short stroke buffer are amazing upgrades. There are arguments for and against the small caliber guns, PCCs as self-defense weapons. I want to put a suppressor on it and I want to SBR it eventually so I can get the full Vichyaz experience. But for right now, it's staying as a pistol and if you're wanting to get into an AK or if you're even just wanting to get into a nine millimeter subgun for under a thousand dollars, this is the gun in my opinion to get. And I hope you enjoyed watching me shoot this thing. And if you have had any experience with the KP9 or KR9 yourself, please let me know in the comments if you like it, if you don't. And while mine is just a sample size of one, I have a lot of friends that have a lot of good things to say about it as well. So let me know what you think. Anyway, guys, thank you again for watching another episode of PSR. It's been an absolute joy to have you. I will remind you that I have a Patreon that you can support me at, as well as merch I will put in the description. And like I said before, guys, it doesn't hurt for you to leave a like and a comment. I edit and film the videos myself, and I just wanna thank you again for taking the time to watch the video to this point. And if you're still on the pooper and you haven't wiped yet, I give you the permission to wipe. This has been another episode of PSR. I will see you later, my friends. Goodbye. You wouldn't believe it if I told you, but I could run like the wind blows. From that day on, if I was going somewhere, I was running. <laughs>